Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to you, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for this crowd of people that would come out in the middle of the week on a Wednesday night. Lord, we've come to bless you, and in return, we will get blessed. Hallelujah. There is never an occasion that we would have an encounter with you that we wouldn't walk away better for it. Never an occasion that we wouldn't have an encounter with you and we wouldn't walk away better. Oh, Lord, it is your desire to pour out into us and among us blessings, riches, the glory of who you are. So tonight, by faith, we receive those things. By faith, we receive revelation. We receive help from heaven. We receive words of life, words of truth that can be applied into our life and to propel us into new heights, Lord, and into strength that we didn't know was available to us. But you saw it all along. You had it prepared for us. Tonight, we come into your presence with thanksgiving, with singing, with joy, with gladness in our heart. Oh, it's an honor to be in your presence. It's an honor to be in the presence of your children. Tonight, we are in the presence of greatness. And we will be greater for it. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Everything that you've given our foot to tread upon, we take that land. We take that land. We take that land. We move into areas tonight that you've prepared for us. We move into areas tonight that you have set aside. And you said, this is territory that I have designated for you. Come up. Come up. If you wanted to use the King James term, come up hither, <laughs> says the Lord. Come up into this higher place. Come up into this higher place. Oh, Lord, we rise up tonight. We rise up tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If your children are still in here, you can dismiss them to the back. Hallelujah. If you feel like moving forward, I certainly invite you to do that. Before you're seated, would you say this with me, please? I declare, I declare that the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ will come into me. I'm not very convinced, by the way. Yes, it will. The doors of my spirit and of my soul are being opened right now. I will understand more tomorrow with my spirit than what I heard with my ears today. I will know more by the Holy Ghost than what I heard in English. I declare that the fowl of the air shall get no seed out of this house tonight. But every word sent forth shall accomplish it shall accomplish look to somebody and say it shall accomplish that for which it was sent do you believe the word of God can fail oh you better listen to what I'm saying do you believe the word of God can fail no do you believe the word of God can fail no absolutely not it is not possible for the word of God to fail it is not ever not ever, 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 ever. Don't hold your breath. It ain't going to happen. The Word of God always is always true. Somebody said one time, if God lied, it would instantly become a truth. <laughs> I, I kind of like that, but God wouldn't lie. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I can tell you came with expectancy tonight. The Lord is working things in us. Amen. Amen. The Lord is working things in us. He is. I hope He works in your response of expression. 
Uh, faith has an expression. It says something and it does something. Faith says yes. Yeah. And faith acts as if you already have it. Because on the inside of you, as far as you know, you do. It don't matter what anybody else knows. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter what anybody else sees or doesn't see. What matters is what you see. And if you see it with the eye of faith and you have one word, yes. Well, you might could elaborate on that. It's mine. Thank you. Yeah. If you were to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to give you my car. I'm not asking for your car. But if you were to say, I'm going to give you my car, what would be the best thing that I could say? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. But if I have doubt, I might say, really? Are you sure? Serious. Yeah. We are children of faith. I think, uh, yeah, thank you. I am. I hope you join me. Hallelujah. I'm a love child of a love God. I'm a faith child of a faith God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been talking about prayer on Wednesday nights. Yeah. And not only have we been talking about it, but God has been stirring a heart of prayer in those who will, who will take on the message. Those who have said, you know what, I'm not just going to show up on Wednesday nights and hear a message. I'm going to show up on Wednesday night and hear from God. Yeah. I'm going to show up. I'm not saying I'm God. I, who was it? I was talking to, ah, we have some visitors. Thank you, Stefan. Um, we have some new people here tonight. And yeah, we're glad to have you here. So several new people. We're, we're glad you're here. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. And glad you're here. Um, Anyway, if you did not get a, 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 a card when you came in the door, would you be bold enough just to slip up your hand? Hopefully we didn't miss you. Uh, there we go. We did miss some people. So uh, they're going to bring you a card, and I'd like you to fill it out if, if you wouldn't. And uh, you can come and bring it to me at the end. You can give it to, to, to Dr. Stefan here uh, at the end. Uh, give it to somebody who will make sure it goes in the right place. Um, this past Sunday morning, we had five ladies that came. Two came for the express purpose of receiving their healing. I spoke to Miss Nancy. She was the one with the cancer issue, right? I spoke to Miss Nancy about 5.30 this evening. She said, I canceled my chemo treatment on Friday. <laughs> Hallelujah. She said, I am convinced I don't need it. She said, I fought this thing and was winning when it was me and God. And then I got into this doctor thing and I started losing. And for four years I've been struggling. But she said, Sunday something took a hold of me. She said, God and I got this thing. I don't need the doctors no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I said, Miss Nancy, we are right, right there with you. We are right there with you. Praise God. And she says, oh, thank you. Keep praying for me. I said, yeah, I will. But my prayer is different now. She said, what do you mean? I said, I'm no longer praying that God will do something in you. God already did something. Now I say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Faith has an expression. Faith says, yes. Faith says, I have it now. Faith says, thank you very much. Faith says, thank you very much. It takes it and it gets up on the go. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that's good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, like I started saying, we've been talking about prayer on Wednesday nights. And many of you have, have taken it on. Uh, our prayer meetings have begun to lift off. In, in, incredible. Tuesday night prayer. I, I might end up saying a couple things later on. But, uh, oh, my. Oh, my God. You are wonderful. <laughs> it, it was amazing. You men who missed it. <laughs> oh, we just blessed you anyway. We blessed you. We covered you. We covered you. We covered you. You're stuck in traffic. Oh, man. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad. No, I'm not really. This is, this is uh, not serious. I, I was so glad you weren't here because if you were here, it might have been different. Uh, and I wouldn't want it to be different at all. It was so wonderful. No, it would have been better if you were here. Uh, so next time, I'm sure you'll come. But... Uh, Oh, man, we got into such a deep spirit of prayer. It was amazing. Okay, so in, in, in talking about prayer, uh, one of the things that has been said is when the spirit of prayer is there, pray. Yes, that's right. That is not the time, and we didn't do this last night. 7.30 rolled, and we were in the depths of prayer. You think we stopped? Lord, No. The spirit of prayer was there. It was so easy to keep praying. Yes. And when God said, oh, you've covered it, 
It was so easy to, to feel good about stopping. There was no condemnation. We didn't feel like we, we obeyed a clock. We felt like we obeyed the Lord. And nobody complained. Hallelujah. Um, anyway, so when the spirit of prayer is there, pray. And so many of you have, you've just been attuned. You've tuned yourself to say, Lord, there is a job for me to do in the earth. I can only do so much physically, but there are things that I can accomplish spiritually. And you accomplish those things spiritually through prayer. Through prayer. So we'll hit to some of that uh, tonight. I want to recap and review just a little bit. And uh, we have so many new people here tonight. And, and I'm glad the Lord. Literally, I left all my other notes home. Um, so I'm not reviewing from just a stack of notes. I literally created a review for tonight. So like, praise God. It's his own purpose. Hallelujah. So this is going to be quick. So there's, there's a lot of depth that you won't get in these main points. Uh, in some of these points, but it exists. So for those of you who don't know, you can go to our website, believersfellowship.com. All of our, uh, pretty much all of our, our messages, all of our services are online, and you can go back, catch this series. It's real easy to see the picture, building a house of prayer, and, uh, and go back to the beginning and pick up. But number one, we discovered this. Prayer is an unseen work of preparation. Prayer is an unseen work of preparation. So uh, in looking at building a house of prayer, we, we found that uh, Jesus said, My house shall be called a house of prayer. Of course, he was quoting the prophet. But Jesus, God's house, is a house should be a house of prayer. It's his desire. That was his expectation. And then other scriptures say, Except the Lord build the house, he that labored to build it, labor in vain. So you have this understanding that the Lord desires to build a house of prayer. Coupled along top of that, we recognize that he's not talking about this building. He's talking about... He's not talking about this building. He's talking about Me. you. You are the temple, the house, the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. So when the Lord wants to build a house of prayer, he's talking about to build you a house of prayer. Not a house for you to pray in, but a house that prayer can dwell in. You being that house. Number two, we, uh, we discovered that persisting in prayer brings about purification. That was one of those P messages, if you remember that. Uh, persisting in prayer brings about purification. What does that mean? It brings you into alignment with the plans and purposes of God. Yes. Persisting in prayer brings you into alignment with the plans and purposes of God. Proverbs 19.21, very easily understood in the New International Version. Proverbs 19.21 NIV says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. See, the Lord set us up with that P business right there. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number three, we discovered there are different types of prayer for different purposes. There are different types of prayer for different purposes. Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer. That's a good indication that there's more than one type of prayer. If that doesn't work for you, uh, you can get it this way. Uh, go to the King James there, Christian. You're in the NIV right now. Pray. Oh, still in NIV. Praying always with all prayer. What the NIV says, praying in the spirit with all kinds of prayer. Uh, and supplication in the spirit. We talked about supplication. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I'll give you my translation again. This is the John Freed translation, and maybe one day there'll actually be one. I, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, the Lord does, I guess. Continue praying with every type of prayer in genuine heartfelt appeal in the Spirit. And keep looking for its fulfillment. Not giving up or quitting, but pressing through with sincerity on behalf of all them that believe. I suppose my version is uh, amplified to some degree. <laughs> and so that, that led us coming out of that, that led us, is, that's kind of a segue verse. It covers the fact of different prayer. It also covers supplication, which is down the line in a moment. But it also covers this understanding that praying repeatedly, this is number four. This is the fourth major point that we learned. Praying repeatedly or consistently is not necessarily praying in unbelief. We talked about a common misconception 
a common problem in faith circles, word in faith circles, word of faith circles, whatever terminology uh, that, that you've kind of ad- adopted there. But we fell into this pitfall that every prayer is a prayer of faith. Now, let me make something clear. Every prayer should be prayed in faith. But not every prayer is a prayer of faith. So what do we mean by a prayer of faith? Well, it's the kind of prayer that you know strongly and firmly the will of God. Not only do you know it in your head. Here's a key factor. We addressed this on Sunday morning. Not only do you know it because you read it. Oh, I know that verse. I've read that verse before. Oh, isn't there a verse in the Bible that talks about that? Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. So that may be a starting point. But it's not a finish point. So it may be a starting point. You have to start there. It won't get in here unless it first passed through here. And one way you could say it, unless it first passed through here. Faith comes by hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, better, you know, one way we say that it comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. However, that it may happen that way often and probably most often. But it doesn't have to happen that way. Sometimes faith comes in your heart when you heard it one time. So faith doesn't come by repetition. Faith comes by revelation. Faith does not come by repetition. Faith comes by revelation. Can you say both of those phrases together? Faith doesn't come by repetition. Faith comes by revelation. However, it may need to be repeated in order for it to be revealed. If you didn't get it, repeat it. Repeat it until you get it. Who's the little guy? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. It's not complicated. If you didn't get it the first time, don't quit. Persist. Okay, point four. Praying repeatedly or consistently is not necessarily praying in unbelief. It could be. It could be, but it's not necessarily praying in, in unbelief. All right, so here's, here's uh, some phrases that we took out of that. Pray in faith. Pray faithfully. You could take the term faith, and it also carries the understanding of faithfulness. Consistency, persistence, proper. It includes that idea. So pray in faith, but pray faithfully, right? So, but here's, here's, the, here's the underlying point. Not every prayer is a one and done prayer. There are things that you, you need to continue to go to bat for. And backing up to the subject matter of faith, although our main subject matter is, is prayer, um, it, it, it can, don't fall into the trap of mental assent. If I can say it this way, of fake faith. Uh, scripture talks about unfeigned faith. That means fake, fake faith. So if the scripture could say that there's faith, un, uh, that there's unfeigned uh, faith, uh, unfeigned, yeah, unfeigned. Uh, that means fake. It's unreal, untrue. It's not true faith. Okay. So anyway, if you if there can be fake faith, that means there can also be real faith. So the confession sounds the same. There's a confession unto faith and there's a confession of faith. And they both say, thank you very much, the same thing. There's a confession unto faith and there's a confession of faith. And they both say the same thing. In other words, their words are the same, but only you know the difference. Is my confession a confession bringing me into the realms of faith? Or is what I'm saying, is my confession a confession of, from within the realm of faith? It's feigned. Feigned faith is fake. Feigned faith is fake. Unfeigned faith is real, not fake. Genuine faith. I'm sorry. I, I, blah, 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 back all that up. Unfeigned faith is real faith. Feigned faith. If there's unfeigned faith, that means there can be feigned faith. If there's real faith, that means there can be fake faith. There we go. Did, did, correct? Did I, did, we good? Yeah. Nobody walk out of here. And, I got. Feigned faith, hallelujah. No. Faith unfeigned. Glory to God. Thank you very much for helping me correct that. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you one verse. That's a big point. 
for us, especially in our circles. Because um, now, my, let, me, let me bring you back to Nancy. I told you this right at the beginning. She said, continue to pray for me. Why would I tell her no and make her feel like she's on her own now? I have no problem with continuing to pray for her. But my prayer changes. No problem at all in continuing to pray. And, and, I, and, and I'm glad it came up because now it's in her mind. Wait a second. That means my prayer can change. I no longer need to ask the Lord to do anything. He's already done it. But do we stop praying? Here's the problem with stopping praying all the time is that we never end up going into the prayer of thanksgiving. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. Uh, and then, of course, also you have pray without ceasing uh, and, and giving of thanks. When we pray in the Holy Ghost, Paul said, you verily or truly, you give thanks well. See, there is a prayer of thanksgiving that needs to happen. That might be a more pure definition of the prayer of faith than the one that just comes in with the with a punch in the gut. Because yeah. that prayer that comes in with, with, that, with that punch that says, I'm going to knock you out with this devil, it could just be all emotion right. and empty of faith. I don't want to get lost up in this because this is, wasn't where I intended to go, but this is where the, where the pull is. This is where the pull is. When we talked about Intercession. We'll, we'll, we'll hit this in a moment, Lord willing. We talked about the passion that tends to be an intercession. And so uh, it was very common in, in praying churches that uh, every kind of sincere, deep, passionate prayer was called intercession. And wrongfully so. However, we understand that praying is more important than knowing the rules. Right? Okay, so, so if they called it intercession and it wasn't intercession, but they were getting the job done, I don't care what you called it. How many of you ever ordered a good meal but couldn't pronounce the name of the meal? Yeah, I don't care what you, hey, it's your restaurant. You call it what you want. I like it. I order it. I eat it. Right? So, it, it, so somebody may have named a particular prayer that somebody was doing or whatever. You say, oh, yeah, see, see them over there? They're in the middle of intercession. Maybe they weren't. Who cares what they named it so long as they were getting the job done? All right, so we're talking about prayer, faith, supplication, intercession. Today we'll get into, if Lord willing, we'll get into travail. We may get into travail. <laughs> ah, anyway, but it doesn't really matter. In one sense, it doesn't really matter what you're calling it as long as you're getting the job done. So, uh, you know what? Let me jump down. I was going to give this at the end, but I'll, I'll give this now because it helps us with our, with our um, little pause here for this portion of, of praying in faith. I gave you two overarching rules and then we added a third one to it later. Does anybody remember what all three of them are? How much money do I have? Five bucks to the person who remembers all three points. No, it's not all I got. I don't know how many times I might do this tonight though. No, you can't look in your notes. That's cheating. Quit making rules. It's my game. It's my money. It's my five bucks. All prayers should be aligned with the, what did you say? With the will of God. That's number one. Number two, all prayers should be, I already told you this one. I just didn't, prayed in faith. Number three, all prayers should be driven by Love. <laughs> this is easy. <laughs> That's my wife. Anyway, she didn't have all three. So you owe, uh, split the, the five three ways. You owe Maria Rivera a little bit. You owe Kelly. No, not really. Anyway, nobody got it. Um, so three rules. All prayer should be aligned with the will of God. Can we say that, please? All prayer should be aligned with the will of God. Number two. All prayers should be prayed in faith. Uno, dos, tres. All prayers should be prayed in faith. Al Suzaman. All prayers means all together. So we still just had the same people. So all Suzaman. All prayer should be prayed in faith. Number one, all prayer should be aligned with the will of God. Number two, all prayer should be 
prayed in faith. So all prayer should be in faith, believing that God is able, right? Number three, all prayer should be driven by love. By the way, if your prayers are not driven by love, they don't work. You say, but my prayer had faith. Yeah, but faith without love doesn't work. Faith works by love. Faith works by love. Yeah. And then, you, then we, we, we ask, but it's not, it's not in, in God's will. And he don't answer those kind of prayers. He's not going to answer a prayer that, that brings you into destruction. Now, we'll get to a pitfall weeks down the road here that talk about the pitfall of praying everything, Lord, if it be thy will. Because you can't pray that prayer and be in, uh, in, in real faith at the same time. Because faith, very good. <laughs> Preach it for me, boys. Why? Why can't you pray a prayer in faith if you don't know the will of God? Because faith begins where the will of God is known. If you don't know God's will, where do you go? If you don't know God's will, where do you go to find out God's will? To the Word. To the Word. So you never have to pray. See, here, here we are in this number four. This is still that, that, that four. The times where you pray in faith and the times where you keep praying. Okay. Um, you never have to pray concerning healing, Lord, if it be thy will. Why? Because we have his word on it. You never have to pray. Here's, here's one that, that I bet you... If, if you're bold enough and honest enough, you just fess up to this in just a moment. You probably will be in very good company. But you never have to pray, Lord, should I share the gospel with that person? Oh, yeah. How many of you have ever done that? Oh, we have a lot of soul winners, man. This place should have 10,000 million people in it because... Yeah. Okay, let me ask you again for your honesty. How many of you have ever said, Lord, should I share the gospel with that person? Yeah, yeah see, you still got a bunch of liars in here. Anyway... <laughs> Hey, I ask it, I ask it, but the reality is we never really have to ask it. You never really have to ask it. Now, you say, well, but there are times where somebody has closed off their heart and the Lord is... Well, yeah, and in your going, He will arrest your attention. So I'll say it this way. We have a universal green light to share the gospel. Every once in a very rare, rare, rare occasion, He'll go, whoa, wait a minute. Okay, anyway. So, but what I said was, you never have to really pray, Lord, is it your will that I share the God? You never have to pray, Lord, is it your will uh, that I be healed? And there's a variety of things like that. But there are other things, even though we know his will, the answer to the request, although the request is heard, the answer to the request, and let me use this word, it's kind of King Jamesy, is forthcoming. There are some things that need to be prepped. It's not... Lord, I know it's your will that X, Y, Z. Thank you. Amen. Whoa, there it is. You know, most of the time it doesn't happen that way. Most of the time there's preparation. And that goes all the way back to our point number one, that, uh, that, that we are a work in progress. So the Lord is working in us. Sometimes the Lord is working in other people. Uh, what's that story? Amen. I think it's Lester Summerall, where he was... Uh, no, no, no. Oh, man. It was a minister. He was praying for a, for a vehicle for the ministry. And the Lord said, uh, I've got it for you or whatever. And anyway, about 10 people down the line. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, I'm getting. Okay, here, here we go. Rodney Howard Brown gave away a vehicle one, one time. And he's like, Lord, you know, I need this vehicle. You know, whatever. And, uh, and the Lord said, yeah, but I don't, I don't have anybody else. That also works for the Lester Summerall story. And we'll tell, I'll tell that one second. Anyway. Uh, and he found out, I guess through, I don't know, probably through praying and the Lord just revealing him that he was number 10. That the Lord had gone to nine other people and said, do this. Fulfill this. Fulfill this request for this ministry. Nine other people said no. Now, the man praying, as far as he and God were concerned, it was settled. It was done. He had confidence in his heart. Uh, I'll give you a, a, a scriptural reference for this. Uh, Daniel prayed. And uh, was it the angel Gabriel or the angel Michael was withheld 21 days? 21 days by the prince of Persia. It's Michael. Okay. 
Uh, where is that? Daniel 13? Huh? Yeah. Michael was withheld for 21 days by the prince of, of Persia. In other words, uh, the answer, and, oh, and when you read it, I think it's Daniel 13, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, that it, it was said to Daniel, Michael said to Daniel when he showed up on the scene, the archangel Michael, that guy. I mean, you know, hey, you can come visit me anytime. You know? Anyway, so the archangel Michael shows up and says to Daniel, I was sent the first day you prayed. But the prince of Persia withheld me for 21 days. In other words, it was a fight to get here. Okay. Anyway, so there are things that need to be pressed through uh, in prayer. All right, we're going to move past that. Colossians 1.9. Um, I asked you the question, by the way, under this same point, do you believe Paul was a man of faith? So I'll ask you again, and you can answer. Do you believe the apostle Paul was a man of faith? Yes. Well, I do. Look what he says in Colossians 1.9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Well, he could just pray one time, right? He was a man of faith. No, he says, I do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Sounds very much like the Ephesians prayers. All right, let's move on. Number five, a fifth thing that we learned so far in our series, supplication. The genuine heartfelt plea of recognizing the need for divine intervention to add benefit to, to strengthen, and to refresh. That becomes uh, different in the sense of supplication. If you can take that word, remember I mentioned to you, Kelly and I were in a conversation, and she, she used the word supplement in the in this sentence, and immediately the Lord uh, brought up supplication to me. It wasn't in context with what we were talking about, I don't think, um, but anyway, in a sense, that's what supplication is. It's a supplementing. So in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul is, is supplicating, so to speak, for the saints of Ephesus. He's saying, I pray that you would be strengthened with might in your inner man. That the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ would come unto you. See, So that spiritual benefit, spiritual enlightenment would be added to you. He is supplying uh, supplementing uh, in, through his prayers to those saints. Different than intercession. That, that was number six. That was last week. Intercession. So now we started with saying we got to be careful that we don't fall into every type of intense prayer being intercession. We've gone through several other types of pieces which are often intense prayer. And when we came to intercession, um, I, I, made, I made reference to you that passion has more to do with proximity, the dearness of the heart. What's, what's personal to you, you are passionate about. Say it differently. What, what you're passionate about is because it's personal to you. Uh, I used an example on a couple Sunday mornings ago. Remember we were talking about the Holy Ghost where Jesus said, Hey, listen, you can talk about me. You can say it bad to my face. You can say it bad to other people. But don't talk about the Holy Ghost. The unpardonable sin, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. And so I made that reference to you and I brought my wife up. And I said, you can say just about whatever you want to my face. And, and I'll hold my cool. You mess with my wife, we got a problem. Any, any guys say amen on that? Amen. You know. Now, my wife can stand on her own two feet and she can hold her own pretty good. Amen. But she is very dear to my heart. So what touches her touches me. That's why Jesus is your intercessor. Because what touches you touches him. That's why he is not a high priest that is not, uh, that, that, that's not separated from the infirmities of man. But rather he experiences, experienced them, suffered and was tempted in all points just like as you are. That's how, why we have such a high priest making intercession for us in the heavenlies. Because he knows what it's like to be human. He knows what it's like to be human. You say, well, I thought he was God. Yeah, and he knows what it's like to be God too. He knows both sides. And so he can intercede to the Father and say, Father, I've been there where they are. I know what it's like to go through what they go through. And so as, as our intercessor, he stands in the gap withholding judgment, giving space for repentance. repentance. 
That's what intercession does. Intercession, a plea on behalf of another for mercy and the delay of judgment, giving added time for repentance. We use the story of Abraham. Abraham comes in and, and, and God shares with Abraham, right? Remember, Abraham is with the two men, which are actually the two angels. And he says, shall I share with Abraham what we are about to do? Yes, I will, because I know him that he'll, Genesis 18, because I know he'll command his children well after him. So he shares with Abraham that he's about to light Sodom and Gomorrah up for their iniquity, right? And then he sends them down to Sodom and Gomorrah. The two men, the two angels, they leave. And we said, really, when you read the whole story, you find out they leave to go set fire to the place. Abraham stays and turns back to God and begins to make a plea on behalf of those. And so we said, do you see the gap? Here's God. Here's the, the three men. God says, go to go. Abraham stands in the gap. Right? So an intercessor is one who stands in the gap. Jesus stands in the gap, bridging the gap between sinful humanity and holy God. Okay? You and I stand in, in the gap for uh, loved ones, those that, that we have relationship with, that we know we're unsaved. And when we're standing in the gap, we cannot make judgment go away any more than Abraham could make judgment go away. Per adventure, there'd be 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Did judgment come? Yes, yes it did. Ultimately, Sodom, rather quickly, actually, Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. Why? Because there weren't 10 righteous. So Abraham uh, fought stood in the gap to reduce the criteria. Let me show you something. Jesus reduced the criteria. He took away, absolutely, almost zero, one criteria, faith in what he did. He said there's only one law. There's only one law that, that you have to, have to obtain to. That's the law of faith. You have to believe that I fulfilled all of these on your behalf. Jesus lowered the criteria as our intercessor. He also stands in the gap and says, withhold judgment for those who haven't believed yet. Hallelujah. That's good stuff. So we see in Abraham, he couldn't make judgment go away, but he lowered the criteria. Jesus lowered the criteria. Um, we see in other intercessors, that, that like, such as Jonah, and we talked about that, that time was given for Nineveh to repent. Nineveh did repent. Nineveh fell back into its ways and then ultimately was destroyed. But... Okay, we're not going to get the travail. We are only going to end up uh, recapping. Um, but uh, huh, unless you guys want to hang with it, but I, I don't think so. I'm sure you would, Ed. Um, I want you to get this, though. Because this, this is a huge part. This is just a big review, and we're, we'll, I think we'll finish up here at this part of intercession. Oh, this is just so beautiful. God desires a legal intercessor. Remember out of Ezekiel, he said, I looked for a man who would stand in the gap for the city. Finding none, I had to exercise judgment. What if he would have found one? Judgment would have been withheld. Mercy would have triumphed over justice. All it took was an intercessor. All it took was an intercessor. You have loved ones. You have people you know. There are probably people that you just got tired of dealing with them. Tired of sharing the gospel with them. I'm tired of doing that. I ain't going to do it no more. Well, quit talking to them and start praying. Start interceding. You've probably said too much already. You've probably made them put balls of cotton in their ears every time they know that it's Thanksgiving. Oh, gosh, I don't want to go to Thanksgiving. See, you're thinking, I don't want to go to Thanksgiving because my heathen family is there. You know, and they don't want to hear the gospel. And, I don't, you know, and they're thinking, oh, my goodness, I don't want to go to Thanksgiving because my, yeah, my born-again brother is there. My born-again sister is there. And all they're going to do is tell us about how good God is, right? So you're both feeling the same way on different fronts. But intercession could change the heart. Allow the Spirit of God to go to work on your behalf rather than you. Some of you, well, boy, I'm meddling now. Some of you wives need to quit nagging at your husbands about their sin. Stop nagging at your husbands about their sin and start talking to God about uh, the, the righteous man that he's called them to, him to be. Hallelujah. Oh, that's good. That's good. That good. Maybe vice versa too. 
Maybe some of you husbands need to stop uh, complaining to your wife about what a terrible wife she is. Or maybe even just complaining to God about what a terrible wife she is and, and start speaking words of faith, words of truth. Hallelujah. It's a whole different type of intercession if you think about it there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we didn't get into travail. That's funny. It has two meanings there, doesn't it? Yeah. You got into trouble. Yeah. No, I'm not in trouble. You're going to love me when you see your, your, uh, your visions come to pass. You're going to be, oh, I'm so grateful you told me that that night. From that night, everything changed. Everything changed about how I've approached the situation. Everything changed. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that can be you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Men's Warehouse says you're going to love the way you look. <laughs> Why? Because they believe that what they have is a good product. Mm -hmm. You're going to love the way you look. When you put the word of God on you, yeah. you're going to love the way you look. When you, when you uh, clothe yourselves in robes of righteousness, you're going to love the way you look. Hallelujah. 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 When you throw off those uh, slave clothes and you put on those cl clothes of freedom, hallelujah, you're going to love the way you look. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're aligning us with your plans and with your purposes. You're aligning us with your will as we pray, as we pray and as we, uh, as we read and get in, get in your word, you align us. You bring us into proper position. Oh, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Much power is available to us. Why? Because you've made us righteous and we come before you boldly. We come into the throne, of, throne room of grace with boldness, knowing that you always hear our prayer. We come praying in faith, believing, knowing that not only are you willing, but you are able. You are able. You are able. Oh, glory to you, Lord. Glory to you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 You are making us a house of prayer. You are making us a house of prayer. Hallelujah. There are prayer warriors in this room. Prayer warriors in this room. Prayer warriors in this room. We don't complain first, we pray. We don't talk bad, we pray. We get in the throne room. We, we know how to fight our battles. We fight them on our knees. We put on the whole armor of God. We put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. And then our prayers are well heard and accepted. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we've asked you several times, and I ask you again. Wake us up in the midnight hour. Wake us up in the nighttime. Arrest our attention, and even in the middle of our sleep. Oh, bring us in, 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 into the realms of glory alongside with you, doing battle in this, in this earth. Oh, but we don't fight from a position looking for victory. We fight from a position of having victory. That's why you would wake us up, because we know where we stand. That's why you would say, ah, there's one that I know that can pray in faith. There's one that I know will press through and enter in. There's one that I know will be faithful to take it up in prayer, not, not being weak and not fainting, not falling asleep, but persisting, can you just stay awake with me for one more hour and press through in prayer? Lord, we are those people. Call upon us in the nighttime hour. Call upon us in the daytime to press through and to persist in prayer and to make many, much things, many things accomplished in the spirit realm. Much accomplishment in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. Through our prayers. Through our prayers. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. 
Hallelujah. 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 I promise you, if the Holy Ghost wakes you up in the middle of the night to have you do work on His behalf, you won't be tired. You won't be. You know, when Jesus fasted in the wilderness for 40 days, He did it without food and water. I'm not... Where did He get water? It said he would have also thirsted. Well, that's a little presumption to. to yeah, I know, very little. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we won't go to battle on that. Well, I'll read you a story of a natural man who fasted for uh, 180 something days and for many times more than 40 days without water because they tried to kill him. He was supernaturally fed. If the girl bitten by devils could eat spiritual food, not physical food, but they would saw her belly puff up, and having been filled with food, then the same thing could be done in, on the Holy Ghost side of things. Yes. So, and that would be like, like Moses, 40 days. But Moses went without food work. That's a yeah. supernatural fasting. Moses, 40 days on the, on, on the Mount, Mount Sinai, 40 days without food and water. So anyway, what I'm, what I'm saying is, if, if that can happen to a man... 40 days, I'm not, I'm not asking you to go 40 days without food and water. I'm saying if the Holy Ghost wakes you up in the middle of the night, you don't have to be afraid that you'll be tired the next morning. That's right. Lord, don't you know i got to wake up at 5 a.m.? Yeah, I do. I do know. Of course I'm God. Of course I know. Surprise. Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. I forgot. You know what? I'll call on somebody else. That's probably what he'd say if you ever said it back to him. If woke you. Anyway, oh, let that not be us. Let that not be us. Lord, you can use us anytime you desire. Anytime you need us, we're at your service. We are at your service. Call upon us. We'll answer with yes because we're children of faith. Hallelujah. Children of love. Glory be to God. That's a good place for a... That's me. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for these people. I thank you that you've blessed us tonight with your word and with your spirit. I speak supernatural strength, uh, revelation and enlightenment to them. Spiritual strength coming into their physical body. That their sleep would be multiplied unto them. That dreams of... This is how I used to pray over my kids. That dreams of glory, dreams of heaven, dreams of angels, dreams of things to come would be in, 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 in your dreams tonight. That you would see hope. You would see glory. You would see the miraculous in your dreams. And it would come into fulfillment in your living. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You can go if you want to. You can stay if you want to. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus.